uh, let me check first to see if everybody can see the uh, presentation. And I wanted to, uh, can everybody see it? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, except the ones on the phone. I know you can't see it. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to start off with a, a little bit of Jeff, I mean, of our host of music. And, uh, and introduce him. Um, uh, he has immense uh, musical talents. He was a student at uh, Mohawk College in the jazz band. He's been playing music since 1962, and he toured in the bands of Donald Byrd and Dizzy Gillespie. Uh, but he's done more than that now. He, uh, he's the son of a couple who sheltered uh, Dr. King. And uh, this, uh, this host called Dr. King Uncle Mike. And Uncle Mike taught him a lot of nice skills about, you know, never being bitter and always showing love to people. And he's lived that way all of his life. Uh, and as he mentioned early in the discussion, he, he lived on the most bomb street in Alabama, which is uh, Dynamite Hill. He's a classmate of uh, and friend of three of the girls killed in the 16th Street uh, uh, Baptist Church bombing. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our kids 1963 friend and hero, Jefferson Drew. <laughs> Thanks, James, and you've been very kind. Uh, this is about Birmingham's musical talent. This, this, this segment for kids in Birmingham is something that we put together to recognize the vast talent, uh, musical talent, uh, here in Birmingham. Uh, uh, Birmingham and, and, and the South in general has produced a large number of jazz musicians and R&B musicians, many of which have gone on to international fame. We won't be able to mention every name. It's impossible in the, in the time that we have, which is just an hour, for me to mention all of the names. So we pick a sampling of names and, of, who are representative of their uh, accomplishments uh, and from Birmingham. And to just uh, to, without, further, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the very first slide, which would be from Erskine Pockets. I think James, you might have a little bit of little bit of music. Oh yeah. Well, it, while he's playing a little music, I think everyone in the world knows the song Torpedo Junction. If not, if not the tune, maybe the lyrics as well. Way down <laughs> south in Birmingham, this uh, th this particular tune took Erskine Hawkins and his band to worldwide fame. But more importantly. It recognized the train station down in Inslee where people met. And of course, Inslee was a black uh, a section of Birmingham and still is, and produced a large number of great musicians and lots of parties and bands. Um, it was a swinging place at Tuxedo Junction, make no mistake. Uh, I, uh, Jack, you remember uh, some of the stuff that went on in, in, at Tuxedo Junction? I do. And in fact, uh, maybe I should just quickly mention that um, one of my uncles um, uh, actually was a member of uh, the group later in later years and, uh, went in and worked with Erskine Hawk Hawkins in New York. Um, but, you know, one of the lures uh, is that they couldn't wait to get out of Alabama once they became extremely famous very quickly. And so they uh, took a lot of the uh, instruments that they were using, which technically was state property, I guess, <laughs> of, the, of the educational system. But anyway, that, that, that doesn't matter. They had great success and uh, uh, were, were extremely popular. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of fun. Yes, yes, yes. Ers Erskine Hawkins, uh, uh, really put Inslee on the map. And uh, you'd be happy to know, for those of you that are listening, that once a year we still have a Tuxedo Junction station at Tuxedo Junction, right behind the Nixon building. Uh, in, um, are there some other comments, perhaps, about Erskine Hawkins we'd like to share? Well, we'll move on. Speaking of Erskine Hawkins and, the, and, the, and, and his work, 
and the blues. We'll talk about more a little bit later, but this particular gentleman, Mr. Charles Clark, otherwise known as Chuck Clark, was probably the most gracious and most kind musician I've ever met. Uh, played my first gig with Chuck Clark, and I tell you, as a little teenager, I, di I didn't know a C from an F sharp, but fortunately, he was, he was so helpful. He and the likes of Amos Gordon and and others really pulled me through, but Chuck was so kind, and we are lucky, folks, to not only have Jackie, but to have Carl Clark uh, in, a, in attendance as well. Uh, Jackie's in California, but Carol is still here. But let me tell you, Chuck Clark played with Louis Armstrong as well as with Duke Ellington, and any time you heard that alto saxophone play, I can guarantee you heard the smoothness and the mellow tone of Chuck Clark. Oh, my. Go ahead and chime in, Jack. Well, you know, my dad, who was called uh, Chuck Clark, his name was Charles Clark, he grew up in a family of musicians. There are actually five Clarks, uh, four of his siblings, that have been inducted into the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame. Wow. So you, Undoubtedly, there was always music playing in the family home, which was uh, located in the center of Birmingham, very close to somebody on this phone, Dale Long. Um, yeah, next door so, neighbor. Yeah, you were probably uh, uh, missing a lot of sleep <laughs> from all the music that went on constantly. Uh, my two uncles, Arthur and Peter, were very popular musicians in New York. My uncle Richard taught music at Toggle School. Okay. And my Aunt Mary Alice taught music at Western Olin High. Two of her most famous students were Eddie Kendricks and Paul Williams. In the yeah. So she used to always mention that. And um, however, she was burdened with what they call the perfect lady image. Uh, she initially declined to be inducted into the Jazz Hall of Fame uh, because she preferred to protect her image as a member of an orchestra, the church choir, and an educator that was married to a high school principal. So, um, you know, she, you know, back then, jazz was not a thing for, the, for ladies. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. That dark music with, uh, with uh, Rosetta Johnson. Um, so dad played with Chuck Webb. He taught music at Dunbar and Bessemer. Mm -hmm. And he later used his mathematics with, with skills to um, go to work for the Social Security Administration. And at night, he played in the uh, house band, which was the Cool Strings at the A.G. Gaston Motel. Yep. This house band, hosted many famous traveling musicians, such as Jimmy Smith and Cannonball Adderley. Interestingly, the shows were broadcast on WENN radio, so we were able to listen regularly until it became so common that we didn't tune in as much when we became busy teenagers. We sort of took it for granted. Um, and people would always say, gee, you know, listen to your dad on the radio. And I'd be like, yeah, what else is up? <laughs> but anyway, uh, I do re recall and remember some of the stories that he tell about um, coming home from a gig where at, at least half a dozen or so, which were located in the um, in perimeter areas of Birmingham country club sites. And often these performances were disrupted by cross burnings. So when that oh. occurred, uh, clearly they would vacate very quickly and uh, stop playing and try, and, try to, and try to get home. When dad retired at the age of 56 from his government job, he started his own musical group and it was called the Chuck Clark Quintet. They played regularly at a small bar called the Aqua Lounge, which is on 4th Avenue in the heart of the Civil Rights District. Good thing. Good thing. I should also mention that uh, Rosetta Johnson, who uh, Jeff will uh, 
talk about later, uh, also regularly performed at the A.G. Gaston Motel. A note about the photo on the slide, uh, you'll see my dad uh, on the left, shown with his sax. My Aunt Mary Alice, uh, isn't she beautiful, was on the yes. piano. Yes. Yes, they used to say that I resembled her. <laughs> anyway, um, and then the, the gentleman on the trumpet is Joe Guy. And uh, Jeff is shaking his head. Uh, many of you may remember the character that was played by um, Billy D. Williams on, Ladies, on the movie Lady Sings the Blues. That's him. He was from Birmingham. Mm -hmm. He was one of my dad's best friends. And my dad always said he was just the best trumpet player that he's ever heard. Uh, unfortunately, he died at a, at a young age in Birmingham. Um, so let's see, dad's saxophone and tuxedo are on display at the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame. I remember him being thrilled and proud uh, to have been inducted. At its funeral, an original composition by one of his musician friends was played, entitled An Ode to Chuck Clark. On this current slide that you see, uh, just yesterday, I learned that uh, my dad's uh, photograph, which you see on the slide, um, shortly before he passed, um, is now on an, a part of an exhibit at the Birmingham Museum. And interestingly enough, as he's about to approach his, uh, what would have been his 99th birthday, mm. um, I'm, I'm very happy and looking forward to uh, uh, visiting this uh, exhibit next week in Birmingham. So um, also I should mention that that's my sister, Carol Clark, who lives in Birmingham and is in the picture, um, in the photo on the slide pictured next to him. So, so uh, I, think that's, I think that's pretty much it, uh, Jeff. Well, Chuck's, Chuck's legacy is very strong and his genuine musicianship taught all of us rookies how to behave. And so we are forever indebted to Chuck. But moving on, we see the one and only, and I mean one and only, Mr. Herman Sonny Blunt, otherwise known as Sun Ra. Sun Ra from Birmingham, though lived in Philadelphia, is credited with the pageantry, the pageantry of music. No longer did the Sun Ra band come into the gig in suits and ties. As the slide shows, they were costumes and flags and banners and Sun Ra wanted you to know that space is the place. Uh, Sonny would tell us that he was really not from Earth. Uh, <laughs> he, would, he would make it very, very clear on almost every gig that uh, he was not from Earth, but in fact, he truly was from Birmingham, Alabama, which is on Earth. But his music and some of the guys that played with him, John Gilmore, who you see on the slide in the uh, brown hat, was a mentor to uh, John Coltrane. The people that played with Sonny were dedicated musicians that were, that, that were proficient throughout bebop. And many local artists like John, but, uh, like John Coltrane listened to people in the Sun Ra band to learn how to play this music we call jazz. Uh, and that's Mitch beside him. Uh, a number of Birmingham musicians have played in the Sun Ra Band. Quincy O'Neill. As a person, Sonny was a very kind and, and gentle person. I was happened to be on a gig in Philadelphia in which we uh, were, were given a, a one-way ticket and not a round-trip ticket back to Birmingham. <laughs> played the gig. We did not get paid. Had it not been for Sonny, I may have been living in Philadelphia today. And that was 35 years ago. <laughs> Gen he was really a wonderful man. Uh, a, li a little strange, perhaps, for his time, but certainly avant-garde. Uh, Dale, you remember Sonny, don't you? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. 
if to see his band playing uh, I, I was 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 it's something for the imagination it's full of color full of music that you have never heard uh, during Birmingham's time of uh, city stages, the city of Birmingham actually let him have the basement of City Hall for a dressing room. And I tell you, that place hadn't been the same since. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, have, I have nothing but wonderful things to say about Sonny, but most importantly, his kindness over the years when he met any musician from Birmingham or from Alabama. Uh, his Cooperation was nearly guaranteed. Really, a wonderful guy. Are there some? Kind of Jeff, this is Anne. Just wondering, um, when did he start playing? What? How old is he compared with us? I guess is what I'm trying to figure out. Well, let's see. Sonny passed now. I guess about ten years ago, and I think he was in his eighties, Anne, about eighty-two, eighty-five. Mm -hmm. The slide says uh, 1914 to 1993. 1993. Okay, great, 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 great. He was ran. He was something to watch. He was, as you can see by the slide, the uniforms. <laughs> some of those uniforms hadn't been washed in years, <laughs> but we put them on uh, because it was required uh, for the pageantry aspect. I, I, I think he was truly an innovator, truly an innovator. But in the interest of time, James, I think we, we'll keep going. Okay. Johnson. Now, Rose, do you want to play a little bit of her music, James? Oh, yeah. Oh, my favorite. I run around, man. I do you wrong, man. He'll do you wrong and tell you he cares. This is a crazy man. I'm walking around and amazing. Rosetta was you a kind of singer that was perfect in singing in close quarters. She was a knockout in singing in close quarters. Her personality, her overall friendliness came through in her music and it drew people closer to her. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that she did not finish her career, but during the 19, late 50s and 1960s, as the slide depicts, the 401 Club was a happening place. It was like a tuxedo junction, but this time on the south southwestern end of town. Rosetta was a prolific singer and a wonderful person. As the slide goes on to say she taught at Ramsey High School, she was truly driven by children and she had the patience that when she was with young musicians like myself and when we made a mistake she was very forgiving um, mm -hmm. i think that that is a, a quality such as chuck clark and for many other birmingham musicians that should be noted she was really a wonderful singer and a great person to be around uh did anyone else know uh, uh, of rosetta Dale, you don't remember her? Yeah, if I remember her playing from time to time. The little group I played in played at 401 every now and then. And matter of fact, I think she may, may have performed with us once or twice. Mm -hmm. It's been so long she, ago. She played the 401 and the Flame Club. The Flame. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Johnny Hayden's place. Right. Ro Rosetta, uh, uh, she has left us, but her music will continue to live from, 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 from time in Morium. I mean, she's really, really left a great mark here. Okay, James, let's move on over um, uh, to the next slide. And if, uh, most of you should know who W.C. Handy is. Uh, does yeah. anyone here? Say again? Go ahead, James. Oh, oh uh, yeah, he's done some excellent uh, writing of these. First one to write the blues. Uh, that's why he's called the father of the blues. And he toured around, and uh, he had a fantastic memory, the book says where he, uh, he could just hear something and days later could, could just put it down to music. Uh, uh, I don't know how you did that, uh, <laughs> Jeff. I know you know that better than me, but I was amazed uh, at those kind of skills. <laughs> A lot of people say that if it wasn't for the blues, there'd be no black keys on the piano. <laughs> <laughs> 
But that flatted third in music, the flatted third is the door opener for uh, for the blues. And uh, W. C. Handy actually had a music store. Now it wasn't his wasn't his store. I think it was a family store right across the street, Dale, from Parker High School. You remember yeah. Handy's music, right? And he right. he sold it and rented and leased instruments to kids that could not otherwise. Uh, afford them so that the high school bands would have a rich, rich sound. and uh, again his contribution in education uh, uh, is unsurpassed he was really a the family did everything they could to help get musical instruments in the hands of people that would use them um, I had a trumpet from him and I tell you I wish I still had it but more more than more than a person was his music um, he was inducted to the Jazz Hall of Fame, like I said, in 1985, and is considered to be the father of the blues. Comments, maybe? Yeah, uh, he had two sisters that taught at Parker while I was there. One taught English, and another taught math. One thing about jazz, I'll say, folks, is that these guys and ladies who have been, uh, have reached some prominence in jazz, all of them have the challenge to pass this talent and the way we do it, to pass this talent on. None of the musicians that have left Birmingham or Alabama to prominence have not stopped to turn around and educate us younger musicians in how to play this very difficult music. And I think that that is one, one trait that I find in jazz that I have not found in any other genre of music. Uh, Questions, comments? Okay. Well, we know we got to play some of this music. As you, everyone knows, this is from the Tempting Temptations. James, play a little music. Oh, okay. I just love this song. <laughs> that gentleman on the left. This Eddie Kendricks from Birmingham Southside Tisville and was a wonderful person. Eddie died a few years ago, but he continued to, to come and sing with us, a part of Birmingham's musical uh, 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 family, uh, long after he had left The Temptations. We really loved Eddie, as, and we called him Birmingham's own. Uh, back in the other day, that of course, there's a statue of The Temptations on 4th Avenue North, showing the great choreography that they did, and the world-famous Temptation Walk. Temptation Walk. Dale remembers this, and I know Jackie does too. James, you should remember it. But needless to say, the Temptations was a worldwide, worldwide known group, and that one particular song that was written by Smokey Robinson is still requested today. Would anybody guess what that song is? My girl. Ah, My girl. You're brainy people. Yes, indeed. We can't go anywhere these days, even though it's been 50 years and someone doesn't say, do you know how to play my girl? <laughs> I'm very proud of these guys as, as, as for their connections in Birmingham, but more importantly for the men that they were in keeping the group together for so long and giving back to the community. How about some comments? Uh, my first introduction to the Temptations came in Birmingham in 1964. Uh, somehow, and I don't know the details, but I was uh, part of an interracial um, teenage group that had a party at somebody's house in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And they were playing um, the Temptation songs. That I couldn't get them out of my head for, for well, for 45 years. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, how about Veronica? Are you there? I'm yes, I'm here. Do you remember the Temptations? Oh, come on, Jeff. <laughs> come on. I, let me tell you, my, my brother, I had a brother to go to Western Olden at the time. Yes. And so, what, yes, what, 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 what memory comes to mind first, first and foremost? Uh, with the Temptations? Yeah. Eddie Kendrick, that um, had what that facada what did you call it his voice uh oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was a tenor he was a tenor. 
Yeah, falsetto. He was the tenor. Yeah, yeah, the Temptations. I mean, you know, I can remember the Motown Review. I can remember. Do you remember the Motown Review? Yes, with the, the Temptations uh, and the Supremes. And Anne, are you there? Yes. Excuse, yes. Me, excuse me, Veronica. Let me see. Uh, Anne, did you have some comments? Anne Whitehouse. Well, the musical on Broadway now about the Temptations, I really want to see it, called Ain't Too Proud. Have y'all heard of that? No. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's, well, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see it. Um, but it's about about how they you know and you know their their story to the rock and roll hall of fame you know rise to success so i know it's it's one of the things on my to-do list so that is yeah Absolutely. it's called ain't too proud. that 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 title i'm sure comes from the song ain't too proud to play the mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> of course i think that was also written by Smokey. Mm -hmm. uh, Dale, what's uh -huh. your memory of the Temptations? I'm going to move on, well, Ann, but what's you your know, memory of the Temptations, Dale? Well, the, the, the choreography, you could not deny them that. They had some steps that were serious, just as serious as their melodious voices. And then the uniforms that they um, wore in their performances. Uh, I remember being a teenager, and we would show up at the municipal auditorium at 1 o'clock to sit on the front row for a seven o'clock show. We just yeah. had to get the, the front row so we can not miss a thing. It was for the Temptations and the only other person we treat that well was James Brown. Absolutely, <laughs> same <laughs> day. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, Judith, do you remember My Girl, the song? What? You must yes. be kidding. Every, there's nobody, <laughs> unless they live on another planet that doesn't remember the Temptations and every single lyric. I can recite every single lyric of every single song. And my name, call me Judy. Yeah, of course I do. And you know, what, 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 what I think about is how uh, the boys would, their prom, their prom outfits from then on would, uh, would be modeled after the outfits of the Temptations. Prom, prom outfits. Yeah. Tr tracking, tracking back, the Temptations rose, rose to prominence during a time of very romantic music. Yep. Where, where, where boys and girls and men and women would actually hold hands and dance. Um, uh, yes. Slow, there were was, there was slow songs and fast. They brought great romance uh, to music, the whole imagery of romance, and somehow, it has waned over the years, and groups like this. Oh my God! Are you? Yeah, that's you, an understatement. Thank you, Judy. That's an understatement <laughs> that you just made right there. <laughs> well, go ahead and make the real statement. Make the overstatement. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Judith. It's okay. No, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, say it. Come on. Say it. Well, how many how many really memorable songs? In 2019, can you can you name? No, no. <laughs> I'm, I I won't go there. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> but you'd be happy. No, my happy. girl. I will bet you even these kids right now know my girl because they have rap songs over top of my girl. Mm-hmm. It was a, that, uh -huh. that my girl was a sweet piece, and it's still being requested today. By the way, it's That's still correct. being requested That's today. That's what I mean. That it's music scarce. has universal. That's correct. It is. That's the question. Universal. Are there other comments here before we move on, Jackie? What about yes, you? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead, shoot. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember close to the end of the Temptations' career? They made a song entitled Check Out Your Mind. Do you remember mm -hmm. that one? Check Out mm -hmm. Your Mind. Check Out Your Mind. And Do yourself a favor. Right, Do yourself a favor. Right, right. Do you know who wrote that song? Because it was a breakaway from, you know, the usual, you know, yeah. romantic yeah. lyrics. And it was a kind of a political thing, you know. 
check out your mind. It's been with you all the time. It might have been Eddie. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. If I looked it up, I would probably remember it. I was getting some political uh, statement today. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, James, shall we go ahead and uh, see what uh, is going on at the next slide here? Didn't we have a slide presentations on Fourth Avenue? There you go. Here we go, folks. Take Aww. a look at the left hand side, and you will see. And that's not there were five of them. I can see three, but that is really the style. Dale, can you see that? You see the choreography? Yeah. Perfect. Aww. Perfect. And believe it or not, black musicians at the time, the black singing groups at the time, not only had to have great singing voices, but they had to dance. They had to, they right. had to dance as well. And they had to dance and sing in such perfection that that was their only ticket to, to the top. Uh, guys had rooms with mirrors as big as one wall. And they would rehearse in front of these mirrors their choreography so that when they were on stage, it would be perfect. Uh, this was a lot of hard work for them. a lot of hard work, and many, many, many hours in rehearsal. But you can see from the, the results, hard work pays off. Would you agree, Dale? Yes, absolutely. Not only that, but the uniforms played an important role as well. Absolutely. I mean, these, these guys were a, a, a pleasure to see. And they were truly entertainers. There's some question as whether or not musicians are good entertainers or entertainers are good musicians. We think musicians embodied both great talents, both as musical artists and as entertainers. Uh, we can't and, say and enough. Jeff, we can't say enough about that. Yes, go ahead, please. I was, I was just going to add that I'd like to challenge each and every one of you on this call if you haven't done it already, to go down to Fourth Avenue, uh, the site of the Temptations Memorial, and get up there and 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 bust a move and uh, pose and have somebody take your picture <laughs> and post it on Facebook on the kids' site. <laughs> My next time in Birmingham, that's a deal. Okay, in, in, that's the old Carter Theater, right? That's right. Um, well, yes. it's right next to the to the there's famous there. theater, to the old the famous. famous. Right. And so, Anne, I'm challenging you. <laughs> Are you going to take my picture? Next week. I'm there next when, week. Actually, I walked by there. I have some pictures of it. I may have one of me in it at our retreat. I did <clears> go <throat> by there. I have to look through my pictures. That was it. You got to strike the temptation well, pose. Did you pose, Ann? Um, I can't remember. I'll have to look. <laughs> the tilts were great, but they really embody Birmingham and Birmingham's great talent, great wealth of talent, uh, both uh, as singers and as musicians. Like I said, in this particular series, we're not able to hit all. If we started naming names, we'd be here until tomorrow. But it's wonderful that Birmingham has such talent. It's hard to say exactly why. Maybe it was because of the oppression. Maybe it was because of the strong sense of community that Birmingham had. I'm happy to say that the jazz community is an integrated community here at Birmingham, Alabama. There are some wonderful uh, uh, players from all walks of life. We've got guys from Syria. Uh, we've got guys from different religions. And we all get together and cook it. We cook the music. And it was one of the most greatest feelings to be a part of an international group. I'm currently playing with a, a young lady from Japan, Choco, um, um, in, a, in, a, in trio and in quartet. I'm playing with uh, a young trumpet player, just barely 25 years old, who's nearly a master at, at playing trumpet right now. So Birmingham is continuing to birth jazz music, and we're doing this because we care and love the music. The guys that came before us passed it on to, to us, and then in turn, 
or passing it on to the others. This is also can be heard in the churches around Birmingham, Alabama. There are also musicians in some of the churches uh, as well. Mr. Anthony Williams, for instance, and, and, and Bo Bear are both uh, have great choirs and pretty hot music, I must admit. So when you come to Birmingham, if you can't get to a jazz club, maybe you'd like to try one of our churches for some really hot gospel. Uh, any, any other comments uh, before we uh, move on? You, you know, you know um, Ms. Clark uh, mentioned my grandmother lived next door to the Clark house. And I dare tell you, any time that I visited my grandmother and my Aunt Ruth, it was very rare when you didn't hear music coming out of the Clark house. You heard that saxophone, didn't you? All day, all night. <laughs> I mean, you would hear it, and I would sometimes sit out on the front porch and just listen. And we would go visit every now and then. It was just amazing to hear the techniques and the, 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 the intensity of yeah. the music. Musicians from the Clark family. I was thoroughly impressed. I think the last group I heard our dad play with was Avery Richardson in Birmingham before I left and came out here to Texas to go to school. Avery had, Avery had a great band that, that, that schooled a bunch of us. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an ex member of that band as well. Judy, you got something on the tip of your tongue. I can see it. What is it? Me? Yeah. No, I don't. I'm listening. Okay. No. All right. And? You want to unmute your mic? I'm unmuted. I'm just so blown away because I did not know this history, honestly. And it's such a thrill to, to know you folks who have been part of it. It's really exciting. It's very impressive. Very yeah. impressive. Yeah. And I know this, we've just scratched the surface, but it's really good to have this knowledge. Catherine, you haven't said a word. Come on, talk to us. Unmute your mic. <laughs> I think it's fascinating. I loved it. I wanted you to do even more. Um, it was, like Ann said, I didn't know all of this. I knew, I thought that some of the temptations were from Birmingham, but I didn't know all of them were. No, they're not all of them. Not, uh, just two of them? Just two, Paul Williams and Eddie Kendrick. Anyway, um, they're the only ones that I really knew. I had, of course, I'd heard of Sun Ra and, and I'd heard of some of the others, but I didn't realize they were from Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Just a second, Catherine. Go ahead, Ann. Which Ann? Yeah, Ann Jimerson. Ann Jimerson. Okay, so Catherine, I was just going to ask you and Rand as uh, and Judy. Were you aware as white folks, as white kids, during the popularity of The Temptations, did you know their Birmingham roots? I did. I did. I no, did. No, I was into soul music when I was in high school, but we were already gone from Birmingham by then. So I didn't know. I didn't know the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just vaguely heard it later in life, but um, when I was a youngster, I didn't know they were Birmingham. Well, Catherine hit on a major, a major term there, soul music. Soul music was so strong, Catherine, that down at the University of Alabama, even when it was segregated, black groups would play in the fraternity houses down there, sometimes until the wee hours of the morning. Uh, uh, they, would, they would hire almost exclusively black soul music bands. And right. we would cook down there at the University of Alabama until daylight. Uh, on, on Sunday on Sunday mornings. That was part of the biggest party in school I've ever met in my life. But it was the music that made the people so happy. Many oh, times yeah. we played segregated gigs and they wanted soul music. Uh, in fact, I played there before our prom at Inslee High School. They said they weren't gonna have a prom at Inslee High School after we admitted blacks into enrollment. But they it was a big secret as to where the class party would be. I happened to go out on First Avenue, Dale, out there to Cascade, Cascade Club. And, and I was about 15 years old with a big afro and my dark glasses. <laughs> I'm playing Get Ready, which was by the Temptations folks. And lo and yeah. behold, as I looked over my eyeglasses, your class. High school class. It, my high school class segregated the prom, but hired a soul band, Catherine. You know, you know, you know, Jeff. The, the band, band that our 
graduation. We did wait, 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 who's talking? Who was that? Yeah, uh, uh, Jeff. The, the, wait, wait, the, hold it, Dale. Okay. Hey, Catherine. Um, I said we had a soul band at our high school graduation in Houston. Al Green and Dan. What? 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 Seriously. What? Al Green was what? at your high school. We used he to call him Al Green. Dale, what was your comment? Band. Oh, I see. Band. Oh, he was. Uh, I got you. That was awesome. I mean, Dale, you had we were not very close to Memphis. Yeah, the, the, the group I played with in, in high school, I remember playing for the Kappa Alphas at Birmingham Southern College, and that was an interesting gig. Yeah, yeah. Adrian, I see you shaking your head. You're, you're, it's reminiscing, isn't it? Turn your mic back on, Adrian. Turn your mic on. Lower left. Lower left. <laughs> hey, I think I can unmute you. You got it. Okay. No, it's just wonderful to reminisce. It was such a, an integral part of our lives that at that time, it would have been difficult to imagine that we would have gone so far away from it now, that it would be so far in the past. But yeah. A lot, a lot of it has, rec music reflects changes in society. Mm -hmm. As society becomes harder and more violent. So does the music. And so hopefully, uh, go full circle and romance will return. James, you had a, had a comment? Well, I was just going to, you know, I hate to stop it, but I know we try to stop at, 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 at an hour and Ann needs the last few minutes to close up on it. So, I mean, can we all give uh, Jeff a hand? I've been so impressed. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, uh, I got a long write-up to write about you shortly after this meeting to send to everybody. So oh, that's great. <laughs> well, I really don't need uh, six whole minutes. So I was just going to, I'll just put my reminder in now and then we can open the floor back up if that's okay, James. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, usually I just try to remind people that the next uh, meeting will be the third Thursday of November. And we'll have Sharon Robinson as our guest. So it's an evening with Sharon Robinson. You don't have to have read her, any of her books first, but just come with uh, ready to, to chatter up. And when is Thanksgiving? That's not Thanksgiving Thursday, right? It's not. It's uh, the week before Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah. And then we will not have a, a session in December. Well, I'll tell you, folks, this wouldn't be possible without Jackie's help and with the help from her sister, CC. Uh, the Clark family and my family, the Drew family, have been friends uh, longer than Jackie and I have been alive. And uh, we cherish our friendship. And when Chuck and I had a chance to play together, I think that the love between our families was, it came out, Jackie, in the music. I, I'm pretty sure it did. Mm. Profound. Well, Jeff, you've been amazing. And uh, in pulling this together, and, and James, mm -hmm. working out technology and uh, just making it happen. I, I think you two are destined for a follow-up project uh, with you guys as producers. Just take it on as far as your 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 passion uh, fuels you. Yeah, well, just as Ann has said, we have got to pass our stories on. This is something we have to do because good stories of human nature are not, you know, crime is the low-hanging fruit for news. And, and positive stories are important, particularly positive stories from Birmingham with such a sordid reputation. And we can do it by doing things like this. And I appreciate everybody, Adrian, and Catherine, and Judith, you guys are great to participate. Hopefully we'll record, we've got some recording, we'll be able to show it again and again and again, and draw more people to the love that we have right here. It's very, very short time to do something like, a story like this, it's such an, such a great story and such a short time to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks to James on that. Wonderful. And I wanted, I wanted to mention too that um, uh, Jackie and Carol's sister, Charlotte, who wasn't able to be on the call tonight, ended up writing an ode to your dad, right, Jackie? And I, when I saw it, I said, you can add this to your story on the website, on the kids' website. So I think we're going to work that out so that the stories on the website don't need to be just about civil rights or just about the tragedies of 63. The, hum the human stories are the yeah, important yeah. story. Yeah, so, uh, so we will be adding that to the website.
And I can think, as I look at your photos, I can think of something that I consider a special story from our era in the 60s about each one of you. So if you need any help, call me. I've got, I've got a story that you can tell about yourself. <laughs> but, but Dale and I, we can't tell all of our stories. But we'll we'll have to tell them hey, many of them. Way, hey, you recognize this hat? No, I don't know. <laughs> Jeff, you recognize the hat? I'm afraid so. <laughs> you got to tell us. The it's Alpha and the Omega. I gave him. I gave him that hat, dog. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian, so, thanks so much. And Rand, thanks. It's been great. Thank you, all. Catherine. I tell you. And who's who's that? Veronica, you still on? Yes, I'm still here. You have some comments you want to tell us? Closing. Hey, <clears throat> the only thing I can say is that Birmingham is the best. I'm still here. You know, even after going away, I'm back in Birmingham. So that's how good Birmingham is to me. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and really, I know she loves, she loves Birmingham. She writes prophetically about it. So what do you think, Ann? White House. Um, well, I, I never did. I mean, I listened to The Temptations all the time when I was growing up, and I never knew two of them were from Birmingham. I don't know why. I just didn't know that and um I didn't really know about the musical history of Birmingham or about the connection between the uh, Drews and the Clarks. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you all you separated. Okay folks, James swing it brother. Swing some music man. <laughs> oh, oh okay. Uh oh I I I gotta share again. I, I, I took it off Jeff. Yeah, we got to teach him how to be a disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> got to close this out, Jackie's guys. about to sing. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, it's been terrific. It's been... Oh, here we go. You're going to... Can you see it? Serenade us out, and I'll let it go for a couple minutes. Oh, but good night, everybody. And James, you can sound us out with some music there. Good night. Good night. Good night, folks. As you have to leave, go ahead and drop off. I'll leave it on for a little bit if you want to hear it. And good night and God bless you all. <laughs> Thank good you. Night, Jeff. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. Quite well. I learned a lot from that uh, presentation. James got all that music and can't play it. Hey, there we go, James.